that Jesus himself was not God Almighty, that, yes. he, that he had a God over him, yes, yes. that he worshipped that God, yes. and that he prayed to that God, yes. and that God sometimes rejected his prayer, like in the Bible. He didn't reject his prayer. Did he go to the cross? God has wisdom, like you're saying. Did he go to the cross? Of course he did. Did he ask God not to take him to the cross? If it is thy will. If it is Every will. prayer is with God's will, not exactly. with... Hindu, whatever you are, or an atheism, everyone is going to give an account. So I think the difference okay, is that, that we believe that there's a that there's a law or that there's a rule that God follows that he, that there's a punishment for every sin committed. No, God and doesn't that, follow any rule. God well, is the law. Well, no, he's well, not under the law. He is from the, the law. Christian perspective, because that's why Christ is needed, is because somebody has to suffer the punishment why? for sin. Why? Well, it's like somebody who takes out. Death, why somebody right? else? Why can't the person who commits a sin be punished for it? Well, that's what hell is. What do you mean that's what hell is? You're suffering for your sins. No, but everyone doesn't just go to hell because they have sinned. God can forgive yes. the sins as well. If they if they repent to God them because of what Jesus Christ did. No, no, before that he could forgive that as well. So when if you look yeah. at the book of Ezekiel, yes, okay. he says the father is not accountable for the sin of the son, and the son is not accountable for the sin of the father. The wickedness of the wicked among God them. Wait, wait, listen, listen. Respect your Bible. The wickedness of the wicked among them, they'll be uh, when they ask God, I'm paraphrasing, when they ask God for forgiveness and they repent sincerely to him it is as if they had not committed the sin in other words they'll have a clean slate now this is God talking about the wickedness of the wicked now you think about the people who have just committed minor sins or committed some sins if God is able to forgive the wickedness of the wicked as if he wipes out their, uh, their slate clean then it is also possible for God to forgive the sins without the shedding of anyone's blood. But in Exodus it also says that God will visit the sins of the fathers under the third and fourth generation. So there is some father and son, but besides that... So that's a contradiction then. That's, you know, that's a contradiction in your Bible you have to take care of, not you, me. You don't believe in Exodus? No, no, it's not about me. I'm a Muslim. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Looks like that was news to him. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were listening all this time. Okay. No, 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 but are there some... So anyway, we, oh, as Muslims, the, the, reason, the reason I quote the Bible is because the Christians believe in it. Okay. Okay? And I quote There's the Quran sometimes, yeah, yeah. and I quote the Bible as well, to no. bring things into perspective, to show you okay. that if you have that in Exodus, and if you have that in uh, Ezekiel, then you see a discrepancy and a contradiction in your Bible. Well, well there's, there's, two, there's two sides of things, right? You find the balance. But so... Uh, it's not, actually. It's, it's, it's contradiction. If God says that he will not... Uh, sorry, uh, a bastard will not enter the kingdom of heaven even until the seventh... Is it the tenth generation? Tenth, isn't it? Okay. Until the tenth generation. Now, this bastard is what? Was it his fault that he's a bastard? So I'm using the word bastard. Basically, it means born out of wedlock. And that is the actual term used in the Bible. Okay? <laughs> so this, this person who is born out of wedlock, this child, what was his fault? Or her fault? Nothing. So but even his generation and his generation's generation, up to the tenth generation, all of them will not enter the kingdom of heaven. All of them will be destined to where? Hellfire. Now, whose fault is that? So do you, so I think the person who committed the adultery or the sin, born, he's the one who should be punished. Okay. And Islamic narrative is exactly that: the person who commits the sin should pay the price. But in Christianity, it's so, the other way around. It's the ones who never committed the. So let me Saints? back up from like arguing for Christianity because like you know I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ and yeah. Saints, so some people call us Mormons. Yeah. But sorry, I mean, Church of the Latter Day Christ. The yeah? Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Of Latter Day Saints. Is okay. their name? Yeah. That's a big, big terminology. Yeah, no wonder yeah, we yeah, call them Mormons. Yeah, Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> but, All right, you're okay if you call them Mormons. That's not derogatory or anything, is it? No. Well, okay. I guess we just like people. As long as you don't get offended, that's fine. No, we just like people know we believe in Jesus. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so you were going to say. Uh, yeah, no, I think, I think we, I mean... Do you see it as just for God to punish someone who hasn't committed the sin? Who hasn't committed the who sin? Who has not committed the sin. Well, why did God send us to earth in the first place? Well, to worship Him, to start to with. Okay, so my theology is a little bit different. I believe that God sent us here to learn. And I think there's a lot of things that we're born into that are really hard and we didn't necessarily suffer for. So I don't, I don't believe that children suffer for their father's transgressions. Um, but they do, there are things, right, if, if your father goes and does all these horrible things and, and you suffer from that, that's your father's choice, right? He's going to have to suffer for that. He's gonna have no, to but why do the children suffer? Because they're because people have free freedom of choice. No, no, it's not about freedom of choice. Yeah. The freedom of choice was the father who basically had a child out of wedlock. Well, it's the father's choice to do that. But yeah, exactly. The, so why should the child be punished? Well, okay, okay. So talking about the Bible then. So of course we we believe in modern revelation more than 
some ancient things. So there's something in the Bible, some things in the Bible you read. So is this in your Bible? It is in my about, about I'm the, assuming that you're correcting it, you're, you're saying it correctly. No, I don't know about the, Mo the Book of Mormon. We use the King James Bible. I'm yeah. assuming, oh, you use the yeah. same one? Yeah. Exact same? Yeah, but we also have modern revelation and modern prophets. Okay, fair enough. So, with regards to this itself, do you not see a problem where the biblical God punishes the people who are innocent? Do you not see a problem with that? Well, yeah, I do. You do? So how do you reconcile it? Uh, I don't think that's that's the main part of my theology. It is. Can you be saved without the sacrifice of Jesus? No. There you go. Was Jesus innocent or was he a sinner? He was innocent. Who got punished? On the cross, he, he volunteered for that. No, he didn't. Yes, he, he begged did. God to take away the cup in the no, in the garden. You know it. That's not my Come on. Oh, you don't believe that's in the Bible? No, I I don't believe. <laughs> hey, I got him there. I got him there. He knows it. He knows it. You're twisting my words. I'm not. I don't believe that Jesus went into that. So what happened in the garden of Gethsemane? I believe that he agreed to that before this earth life. Go on, tell me what happened in the garden of Gethsemane. I know what happened in the garden. What happened? What, what did he ask God you're, for? You're missing the point. I'm, I'm not. Saying, one thing is that Jesus did that willingly, that he chose to do that. He what did that Jesus pray to God else. in the garden of Gethsemane? What did he pray to him? Take it from me, if it is thy will. Take what from him? This cup. And what does the cup represent? The, the sins of the world. No, what does it represent? Go on, tell me exactly. Taking the sins of the world. No, tell me what it represents. The crucifixion, say it. You know it, it's a crucifixion. Oh, yeah, it, why would Jesus like, listen listen why would Jesus be at the point where he literally feels as if he's sweating blood yeah, yeah. yes because he was in agony agony for what do you think he was actually in agony to take the sins of the world no because of the pain that he's going to experience on the cross because he knew how the Romans used to torture people before they executed them exactly so he's asking God to take this cup away from, from me and if there is another way let it be your will be done, not mine. Exactly, but it wasn't God's will. Which God? God. God Almighty? Yes, God of Jesus? God. God of Jesus? The God. Do you believe Jesus had a God? God his Father. His God. What, did he call his Father God? My God and your God? Remember? In the I feel like we're grasping his straws here. No, know. we are not. I'm actually What's showing you from your Bible because what you're denying is actually in your Bible. When, he, when, Ma when Mary Magdalene approaches him, he says, I go to my Father and your Father my God and your God. Okay, tell me why this is important. So his father is his God. Do you agree? Huh? His father is his God. I don't know where you're taking me with this. I'm taking you. I don't see why this is important. To a point that we agree that Jesus himself was not God Almighty. That yes. he that he had a God over him. Yes, yes. That he worshipped that God. Yes. yes. And that he prayed to that God. Yes. And that God sometimes rejected his prayer, like in the Bible. He didn't reject his prayer. Did he go to the cross? God has wisdom, like you're saying. Did he go to the cross? Of course he did. Did he ask God not to take him to the cross? If it is thy will. If it is Every will. prayer is with God's will, not Exactly. So what are you saying? So what is the what was the prayer? The prayer was that I that I don't have to go through this, I don't have to suffer. Thank you. Did he go through it? He did. There you go. So if rejected. It is thy will. Prayer rejected. If look, it is look. Thy will. If you want to hold on to if your if it is your will, you tell me any prayer which is not the will of God. They all are. Exactly. So even so without you, decide whether or not he answers a listen, listen. Or even without you explicitly saying, God, let it be your will be done, not mine. Even without you using that phrase, yeah. God will still do what he wants. I know. Okay. So the prayer was what? To save him from the cross. Did he get saved from the cross? According to your narrative, no. Jesus Did Jesus done. pray three times to his God? On all three occasions in your Bible, his prayer gets rejected, whether you like it or not. Yeah. So those people who pray to Jesus, be careful. Even Jesus' own prayer gets rejected. Let alone anybody else's. Okay? In Islam, we believe that Allah has the ability to accept prayers and reject prayers. And if Jesus did pray, then the Islamic narrative is that he did not get crucified on the cross, that he was saved from the humiliation and the torture and everything that the that his enemies wanted against him he was saved from all that because allah says in the quran yes they neither crucified him nor killed him but it appeared to them so now let's get back to the point about the justice of god the justice of god do you think it is just of the most just being to hold someone else accountable for the sins committed by others if, if they agree to, it's just like paying debt, right? Like if I'm in debt to you, I'm talking about justice. I'm talking about justice. Not about I know. not about your emotional belief that if they agree to, disagree to. Let's talk about justice. I know. That's a just. That's that's justice, right? If if I borrow money from you, I owe you money. That's justice. Right? Yes. And you have the right to get that money from me. Yes. Somebody else could come in and pay that debt. For Absolutely. Me. That's exactly. You know the key word you use there? Pay. 
exactly. You know, there's a, why you, why you, wait, wait, wait. Do you know why you use the word pay? Because you subconsciously differentiate between the term payment and forgiveness. Now, now look, let me give you the same scenario, but I'll change it slightly at the end. Imagine this gentleman here owed me 10 pounds. Yeah. Yes? He owes me 10 pounds and he's now entitled to pay me 10 pounds as per our agreement. Yes. But then he comes to me and he says, brother, I'm finding it a bit difficult to pay the 10 pounds. Yes? I'll pay it a bit later. Is it okay with you? I said, look here, brother. It's okay. I forgive you 10 pounds. Remember this term, forgive now. Yes? Yeah. No one else substituting for the payment. In your case, someone else substituted. So even though you cannot pay, somebody else is able to okay. pay for it. Wait, wait, wait. I want you to understand the difference between the Islamic narrative of forgiveness of God. Forgiveness means not expecting anything else in return, not expecting any payment or anything in kind, payment in kind, or any substitution at all. Forgiveness means that's it, that's the end of it. And that is exactly what God does when He says He forgives you. He forgives your sins. I think I see the difference now is that you, payment and forgiveness, yes. Yeah, we believe. I, you believe in payment? The narrative is, yeah, every sin, there must be a payment. Exactly. But yours is different. Yes. Not so that. if you look at Hebrews 9.22, I believe it's in the King, KJV as well, yeah. it says, there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Do you see how profound that statement is? There has to be a payment by blood. Okay. And you disagree with that? Of course I disagree with that. The reason I disagree with that is because I believe God is merciful. He does not require no blood from no one and specifically the blood of the innocent and that is exactly what happens throughout the bible either it is innocent animals or it's an innocent human being either way it is the innocents who are punished for the crimes of the criminals the sinners who should be punished who should be held accountable and you go to any court in law any court of law be it in the first world country or be it in the amazon forest no judge will ever say that the one who commits a sin should go free and the one who's completely innocent should be punished this is human nature. As a human, na as a person who doesn't even believe in God will recognize this because that is what justice is. And how can you believe that someone who is the most just, God Almighty, would commit such injustice by killing an innocent being? I, Why? I Why does that, God need a condition to kill? That, I believe that Jesus said he would do it. No, he said he would not. Come on, we have been through this. Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, but, I, but you don't know my theology. You only know the Christian theology. Okay, that, what's your theology? Go on. Christian theology. Go on. Jesus said he can you be forgiven without blood in your theology? No, we there you go. That. No different. So what is? Why would God need? Why would God need blood? Is that Jesus said he would do it. That's all I'm trying to establish. No, but you said you believed in the KJV, and this is in the KJV. I, I, I do believe in the King James but I have additional revelation. Okay, so tell me something that will show me that your God is just God. Okay, so so modern revelation, modern day prophets, yeah, Mormon Karen. prophets, Church of Jesus Christ, Latter Day Saints. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there was life before this life. And Jesus said that he would do that because he knew that people would need a savior to save him. Because, like you said, we need blood for forgiveness. That's what we believe. And so I'm just, I'm just trying to lay the. Point how does that, that absolve that you? God, that God did not choose Jesus against His will. No, no. How does that absolve that. absolve your issue with regards to justice? Well, I'm not arguing that point. We already. So, you, do you believe it is unjust? On no, no, we'll no, no. Hold on, no. It's not about disagreement. Well, I want to know. I want you to know and tell me, frankly, sincerely, which scenario do you consider? as just the one in which God punishes the sinner and not the sinless or the scenario which is your Christian narrative regardless of your Mormon Protestant Catholic whatever you are yes all the all of them they believe in this scenario I think even the Jehovah's Witness believe this that the punishment that Jesus took upon himself the only way for all the sinners to absolve themselves of the sin to atone themselves of the sin is by the death yeah, inshallah, is by the death yeah, give me a few minutes, Hashem. It's by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. So you tell me, how will you absolve yourself, or at least show me sincerely which scenario is correct? The one in which the sinner goes free and not the sinless, or the one in which the sinless goes free and not the sinner? Okay, let me ask you a clarifying question. Do you believe that anybody is sinless? Are you going to ask me a question with the question? And then I'll answer your question. No, I don't believe everyone. I think, I think everyone is capable of sin. Doesn't everyone really everyone sins however okay. however if god wants to protect you from sins and that's what i believe about the prophets yeah. then they can be protected okay I, I believe a lot of the same things good so we we try to do everything we can to avoid sin but the flesh is weak can you answer my question now yeah so i i believe i believe which one is just that's what so i want I to know from you scenario about what you were saying but i also believe in Jesus the first Christ. scenario is where the sinner 
is, is, is punished. No, the sinner goes Sin free and the sinless is punished. Okay, the sinless or killed. punished in my or, scenario. Well, you can't call it punished, you can call it murder, you can call it human sacrifice, you can call it whatever you want. Because Jesus did that so that the sinless could go, the sinner could go Okay, free. so who is the innocent one? Huh? Who was the innocent one in that scenario? Jesus was. Good. And who got killed? Jesus was because he How is that, that just? You tell me. Because he agreed to do that. If somebody volunteers to do something. Even if they agree to do, do you see it as just? It's not about emotions, my friend. Like I, I said, in the court of law, somebody says, I want to take the punishment of this murderer. Yes, the judge will definitely say, no, you can't because that will be unjust. I would not be importing my duty of justice for which I sit here. Do you see what I mean? Okay. If the judge allows that, that itself shows us injustice. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how you cut it, whether emotionally but or justice demands, regardless. My point is that justice demands payment and that payment had to be, had to be given. Justice demands payment. Demands payment. Well, yes, but payment from whom? Payment by whom? Willing payment, that's exactly but what I'm Jesus, saying. But Jesus was the God who gets somebody, he was asking God not to die. If there was another way, but there was, there was no other way. So why do you so think God cannot forgive? Why do you think God cannot forgive? Why do you think he needs blood? Because that justice demands it, right? Justice doesn't mean blood, justice. spilling blood. No, it doesn't I, mean that. I didn't say has, somebody has to die, but if, if you do something wrong, you have to suffer. Punishment. That's what justice is. No, but your Bible says that. That's what the, that's there's what no the forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Nah, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to give you. You're, you're stuck you in a rock and hard place, anyway, my friend. I got I to gotta go. But no problem. Yeah, What's your name? Jeff. Jeff, Jeff very nice meeting you. Hashim. Hashim, thank Take you. Care. Appreciate it. All right. I think with that, uh, we should uh, um, probably end this discussion because it's, uh, well, it's still a bit, a bit of time for iftar. So inshallah, jazakallah khairan for watching. And uh, yes, as we have seen, the different doctrines of uh, Christianity, whether it's the original sin, whether it's the Trinity, whether, whether it's uh, atonement by sacrifice of a human, all of that, all of that shows injustice. And in the case of Trinity, also incoherence. Yes? And Alhamdulillah, as Muslims, we are not having such predicaments. We do not have issues where we have to grapple with, with our own innate nature of right and wrong, justice and injustice and so on. So even if you ask people to show us objectively how you feel about these doctrines, they'll tell you the Christian doctrines, yes, there is a lot of questions that need to be asked and a lot of things which we can clearly see are unjust. And Alhamdulillah, you see in Islam, we go back to the original message from the time of Adam, the first prophet, all the way to the last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi the message has always been consistent that it is the one to commit the sins who are going to pay for it unless Allah forgives them unless Allah is the one who sets them free from that whatever they, uh, the, the transgressions that they have committed and this is also possible with Allah that if you ask God sincerely and with, if you repent to God then he is able with his mercy to forgive you in fact Allah says his mercy is the one which is kind of over his wrath on the day of judgment. So his mercy takes precedence and he shows his mercy throughout, throughout history, throughout our lives. Whether it's now, whether it's going to be in the future, this is something, even the Prophet Sallallahu his own title, one of his titles is Rahmatul Alameen, that he came as a mercy to mankind. So when he came and he could have taken revenge against his enemies, he let them go free. Yes, he forgave them, like in the conquest of Mecca. In Fatih Mecca, he let all those enemies of his who were persecuting him, his family, his companions, torturing them, he actually forgives them. When he had every ability, every chance and every opportunity to kill them if he wanted to and seek revenge against them. We did not. This is the mercy of the Prophet ﷺ and the mercy of Allah takes precedence on the Day of Judgment over his wrath. Alhamdulillah, as Muslims, we believe in the oneness of Allah and we say Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah and we believe that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anna Muhammad Rasulullah so we believe that Allah is the only one worthy of worship and we believe that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and inshallah anyone who follows the way of Allah and his Rasul and believes in Islam they will have an eternal life of bliss and those who reject it they will be the losers in the hereafter so inshallah, come to Islam, know about Islam. If you have questions, please ask the people who don't know about it, people of knowledge. And inshallah, with that, you will be, uh, you, you'll, you, you'll be one of the victorious ones in the hereafter. With that, a bit, uh, 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 I say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan.